accounts that I've done like an about me. So I thought I'd do a quick one. My name is, well, the Bumbling Biochemist, but my real name is Brianna B. Bell. Um, I like to go by Brie. Technically doctor, um, the PhD kind, um, but it still feels kind of weird to have be called doctor and I don't really like the formality. So I like going by Brie. That doctor's for a PhD in bio biology, biological sciences that I got from Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. Um, last year and so in 2021 and I'm currently a postdoctoral scholar in Denitsa Fujimori's lab at UCSF. So a postdoc is basically where you've gotten your PhD and now you're working in another laboratory to gain more experience um, or learn more about a different field and so I'm currently studying translation and ribosomes and some really really cool both biochemistry and chemical biology. So I'm trained as a biochemist and uh, also structural biology, so trying to figure out what proteins and other complexes look like and things like this. So I have this like alter ego that's on a mission to make learning uh, accessible and fun. And so I really like to help people learn biochemistry. I think biochemistry is super duper fascinating and I really just want to help others learn it. And the way I do this is by making some fun graphics and some fun explanations and posts and videos and things where I kind of just explain science in a way that makes sense to me. Stripping it down out of all of the different jargon, um, the like complex terminology. So I introduce that terminology, but also explain things in just normal terms. Because there's a lot of times when there's concepts that get like dumbed down for like the general audience, when they really don't need to do that. Um, it's just that there's this jargon that they see complex words that people don't know and so they don't have the language in order to be able to understand them if you talk about them in those weird scientific -y terms but if you talk about them in terms that they do understand then it makes sense so it's more of an issue of translation and of not knowing like the language than not being able to understand the concepts and the concepts can be really really duper, super duper important so I like to under to introduce the concepts as well as the language and this way if you that language comes up in conversations or you see it in an article or online you'll be able to recognize it but you'll also be able to understand it at a deeper level rather than just being able to recognize the word um, and make some sort of connection speaking of connections these connections are super duper important um, I really emphasize drawing connections between all different areas of science and all these different concepts and I think that's another thing too is that you if you break thing ideas down into these fundamental concepts um, without just hiding them in these complex terms well now you're able to see the connections and see how chemistry and biology and physics um, and math and all of these different things actually come together and they're all staring the same core fundamental scientific principles and things like this and so I like to emphasize thinking in terms of like electrons and atoms and these sorts of things rather than thinking first up and only in terms of these bigger um, these bigger biological complexes and things like that um, so that's really my fundamental kind of scientific thinking lens and then I just try to do what I can to make it fun and accessible for others and so I found that graphics are a really great way to do this yes I make my own graphics unless I say otherwise I use Adobe Illustrator a free alternative is Inkscape and I started learning early in grad school and it's coming really really handy both for scientific presentations as well as for the science communication things in terms of the science communication, it started with just like a few Facebook posts and Instagram posts for family and friends and then it kind of just blossomed for some reason. Uh, people seemed to find it helpful and my account just kind of like exploded and I thought it was like spam or something, bots, but apparently people just found it helpful. Um, so I expanded it out into my blog, thebumblingbiochemist.com, where I have things better organized as well as a YouTube channel, The Bumbling Biochemist. All of this is ad free, all of that stuff. Like I don't make any money off of this. Um, I do it in my spare time, which isn't that much. Um, as a full-time scientist, we'll talk about more in a second. Um, but I really just do it to help people learn. And so I hope that you find it helpful. Um, if it's not for you, 
totally cool. To say I have a soft spot for undergraduates, I feel like they're often kind of overlooked and undervalued in terms of the scientific atmosphere and in terms of what you what information and content there is out there things are often written in terms of for like a general audience or in the super duper scientific language and so it can be really hard to bridge that gap and find that that level of detail that you need and that you want as an undergraduate when you haven't yet really learned how to read these papers and understand all the concepts in these papers that aren't often well described because those papers are going to assume that you have all that background knowledge that you might not have yet at the stage of an undergraduate but actually getting that knowledge can be really really hard and so i try to make it easier to get that knowledge and so you'll see that a lot of my content is probably going to be most helpful and most relevant for undergraduates but it can also be relevant for all different levels of people it just in terms of the actual being able to the target audience i would say that probably most of my content is more geared towards the undergraduate audience and that is who i primarily want to work with when i am hopefully a professor in the future and i've always been about finding that middle ground not so much a middle ground but and way that we can explain these more complex terminology in easier terms but still include all that detail and so sometimes i go super duper duper into detail i'm one of those people who likes to know everything um so there's probably in a lot of my posts and content going to be a lot more than you actually wanted to know or that you'll need to know for a test or that sort of thing but if that content is something that you are interested in it's there so i spend a lot of time doing googling and stuff finding to find these answers to these like arcane prod pro questions that like nobody else cares about but I think it's really fundamental really important to understand the fundamentals of how every technique works what each step each step does all this various stuff so I go really really into the details um, but hopefully in a fun way in an understandable way um, that would basically I'm just teaching for me and other people find it helpful but I'm teaching in a way that would make I would want to learn. Um, and speaking of learning, I have been really fortunate to have an excellent education and that's one of the reasons why I do what I do is to be able to help pay it forward. I feel incredibly grateful and privileged to have had a quality education and I feel like I'm so guilty that other people don't have access to these resources and I want to do my part in order to help um, pay it forward. And so I my ultimate goal is to become a professor at a primarily undergraduate institution, so a PUI, eventually a liberal arts school, um, and to really help work with undergraduates in the lab and in the classroom and give them their first experiences with research and help them get excited about science and really start them on a path of exploration with the mindset of also paying it forward and of helping keep in mind that mindset of being kind of like an outsider and that's one of the hardest things about training as a scientist and also trying to teach is that you kind of forget the things that you didn't know and so i like to keep in mind the things that confused me when i was a student um, and still confuse me and then make sure that I explain those concepts when I'm doing my explanations and so sometimes I might go into details that you're like why would anyone care about this but it's something that confused me um, and when I was in school or that sort of thing and so I just like to emphasize it in case anyone else is confused about it so going back to school um, so I got my P um, undergraduate degree in biology from St. Mary's College of California it's a small liberal arts school in California and it was a fantastic 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 experience um, so I did some independent research with Dr. Jeff Sigmund working on this um, neuropeptidase so basically it's this protein that takes these little chemical messengers called peptides these short chains of amino acids so like proteins but they're short um, and they can act as chemical messengers so cells can send these messages in between different cells as well as within individual cells in order to communicate. And in order to like kill those messages, they can get chopped by metallopeptidases, these neuropeptidases. And so I studied how one of them, how its structure related to how it was actually able to cut those substrates, um, cut those peptides. Um, after so I got really interested in research. I was initially pre-med. I was thinking, okay, well, I like science and I like helping people. So the way you do that is become a doctor, right? 
I didn't really even realize that you could become a scientist. Um, so I love my parents dearly, but they're not scientists. Um, I wasn't exposed to like academia as a child or even in college because I went to this smaller liberal arts school. We didn't really have that formal um, R1 or like this high intensity research institution environment where they have things like postdocs. So um, Dr. Sigmund encouraged me to get outside research experience. I went and I did a summer studying um, actually Huntington's disease, which is neurodegenerative disease. I studied how sort of the cellular and molecular biology of it at actually right over here um, at the Gladstone Institute by, in UCSF with Dr. Stephen Finkbeiner. Um, so that was a really great experience. I got exposed to this bigger um, research environment. Getting into research got me really not only excited about science and realized, okay, well, now I want to be a scientist. I don't, I, medicine's not really for me, but I really want to um, do biomedical type, science type stuff. Um, and so this encouraged me to apply to get to a PhD program. And one of the reasons why I was able to be successful in my application was because I've gotten a lot of research experience as an undergrad. So that's one of the core things is that you get that research experience when you're an undergrad. And so if anybody's looking to apply to grad school, I have a lot of content about that on my blog and various resources. Um, but anyway, so it was really important to get that research experience both during the year, during the summer research session, um, during the summer research experience at another institution. And then I actually got to present my work at the ASBNB conference, which was amazing. And it helped also expose me to the wider scientific environment. I then applied for PhD programs and I was very, very fortunate that I got selected for Cold Spring Harbor Laboratories um, PhD program. So this is located on Long Island, New York, and it's this nice little secluded environment. Um, I worked in Lemur Joshua Torres Laboratory studying this process called RNA interference or RNAi um, that cells use in order to control the levels of the messenger RNAs, so the levels of the recipes for various proteins so that they can control how much of those proteins get made. And I was studying the proteins involved in making those proteins, um, or preventing those proteins from being made, and um, this protein called Argonaut, um, did a lot of protein expression, so making, getting cells to make protein for me, then purifying those proteins out and testing how they interacted with the RNA, how they got modified, and various things like that. In April 2022, I started a postdoc in the Mitsu Fujimori's lab at UCSF. So postdoc, um, short for postdoctoral research or physician or scholar or whatever. And so I'm technically a postdoctoral scholar. Basically, it's a postdoc is where you go to another lab after you've gotten your PhD in order to do research in another area, maybe branch out, um, maybe learn a new technique, um, that sort of thing. Start to gain more independence on the path towards becoming an independent scientist. And so you have a little more freedom, a little more responsibility, um, and more mentorship and um, opportunities to mentor others um, while you're gaining your own independence and so it's a really really great thing um, every, you don't have to do a postdoc especially if you're going want to go into industry or something like this um, but it's a commonly um, postdocs are really common especially for people who want to go into becoming an independent researcher so doing something like become a professor so I like my con to make my content truly accessible, um, help others ex access science, um, both in terms of making all this content free and in terms of making it so that it's explained in terms that are hopefully more accessible to people who don't know all that scientific terminology, but still are able, but still um, would be able to understand and appreciate those fundamental concepts if we just talk about them in a way, in a way that makes sense. And even if you are a scientist, I still think that sometimes we use all this complex terminology when really we don't need to. And sometimes it may sound, make us sound smarter. And I'm not saying that there's not a use for this terminology, then it definitely is. And it simplifies things when you're talking with people in the same field. Um, when you have, because science can be really nuanced and these terms can help you kind of encapsulate all of that nuance but they can also kind of obscure the underlying things and so sometimes I feel like we can talk about things in these complex terms and kind of sound smarter but not necessarily be conveying anything that is smarter and we can be excluding people in the process as well as kind of hiding those fundamental principles that are 
super duper important. Um, and if we pay more attention to those fundamental principles, then we have a better chance of understanding the actual science and what's going on. Basically, that's me. And I do what I do to help people learn. That is what I care about. I like to pay it forward. And I love science and I just want to help other people who don't even know that this cool science is out there be able to appreciate it if they want it.